Good morning, everybody. Hope you are keeping well. Thanks for accepting the invitation to participate in this focus group interview that will help us to gather information about your professional practice. To start with, let me present myself. I'm Dr. Udin, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Center for Open and Distance Learning at the Mauritius Institute of Education. So we'll start by each one you present yourself. Maybe we can start with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Amrita Viraramu. I am a holistic educator. I have four years experience in teaching. Hello, madam. Hello, everyone. I am Kamini. I am a primary school educator at Sigulam Torah Government School. I have 16 years of experience in the teaching practice and I love my job. Hello, ma'am. Hello, everybody. I'm Reid Mohamdi I have 16 years of experience like my friend. I work at Moka Government School. Hello, I'm Zian. I'm a big educator. 15 years of experience. So. Thank you very much for the short presentation. Let me brief you about the focus of this interview. So today's interview will be focused on digital classroom setup and the importance of technology in education. Okay. So the first question that I will set to you, what do you understand by the term technology? Well, I personally think that uh, technology is the application of uh, scientific knowledge and uh, equipment in our uh, education system. And I think it's very beneficial. Yeah. There are various devices that we use at school. For example, we use the TV, we use the radio, we use the mobile phone. Okay. So, any other views about what, what you think about technology? Well, I think technology is something which is omnipresent right now because we need it, for example, our TV, our mobile phones, as she has said. And also, we need it also for educational programs because it helps us to become more efficient. Okay. So the second question, do you have access to technological devices at school at present? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, because we are living in the technological era. Yeah. Our children are technologically very advanced, so we have moved uh, to use technological devices at school now. We have projectors, we use the TV, the radio. Mm -hmm. Is it the same for everybody? No, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not. But for me, we do have access to various devices, as she mentioned, but um, not that practical because in my class I'm not equipped with all that. I have to move on. And so you shift to another class. That's it. I have to shift. And many a time we don't have So accessibility so to technological devices yeah. is a problem in that's certain it. schools. It's, yes. yeah. it's that's very a problem. limited. Okay. So do you think that technological devices used for different grades are appropriate? For example, um, the tablet that you use for grade one, is it appropriate for grade one? Yes. Or you think another device would have been better? In fact, the EDLP, the tablet itself, I think it's uh, very efficient. Uh, we have different applications we can use for project uh, and everything. But the problem is that uh, it takes us a lot of time for the setup itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, uh, the tablets are not uh, are not properly charged. Sometimes the the children tend to forget, for example, how to enter in a textbook. So it takes quite a little time to 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 go with the flow with the ideal tablets to manage you know, to manage the children because the needs will be you'll be looking at someone with a tablet and someone might need you over there. So to manage it takes time. It's time consuming. So if, if I can, what I can gather from what you're saying is that you have a problem to manage the whole class and yes. also to navigate within the tablet. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, another support would be yeah. yes. more yes. interesting. Yes, it would oh. be helpful. Oh. Thank you. Uh, the next question, how often do you use technology in your professional practice? Every day. Every day as well. For me, it's different. Yeah. It's the subject which I teach normally, they are arts, P. So for me, using technology, it will not be based more on some coding, as my fellow colleagues. It will be more on the field, like for example, painting, 
the children, they like to use the paint, they like to dirty their hair with paint, they like to play in the field. So technology for me, if we call it in terms of frequency, I would say at least 10 percent. So you are saying that it's your, the nature of the subject that you are teaching exactly. that actually makes it difficult for you to use technology yes, in your classroom. That's true. But for me, it's not like that. I don't use it. Although I'm very at ease with yeah. technology, yet I can't. Why? Just as I told you before, my class is not equipped with that. I have to move on. And it takes really much time to set up and everything and then to get in the setup and then it costs me out of um, a period is 50 minutes. If I have to shave, it took me around 20 minutes just for the settings and everything for me to get in. Because this is the situation. But yeah. if you had a device in your class, would you be using it? Of course. That would have been really nice. Yeah. Okay. Do you think using technology brings added value to teaching and learning process? Yes, of course. Definitely. You know, the technology nowadays is very child friendly. The children. Every, I think every child has access to at least their mobile phone or not a tablet, if not the PC, they have access to the television itself. So when the technological equipment, whether it be the tablet or even the Sankore, uh interface comes before them, I think they, are, they, are, they find themselves in a more relaxed mode, uh, in a more pleasant mode to work, they are eager to know more. And this adds value to the teaching itself. And as okay. and as we have different types of learners, different learning styles, so technology suits all of them. Yeah. I'll just add, just to add on what you said, it makes learning more meaningful and fun. Can you give me a concrete example how you you use technology in your teaching? Oh. Any example? Sound, we use sound. For yeah. example, if you're teaching on animals, you have the visual, you have the sound, mm -hmm. you can have the family, all these. You don't need the pictures, you have them on the videos. An animated one. Yes, an animated yes. picture. So you use technology to support your teaching, yes. And even for reading also, because you can, you can zoom in the text, you can uh, uh, highlight certain words you want to make, uh, you want to make access to the learners. But it's very beneficial. Do you think the learners like uh, learning with technology? Mm -hmm. yes. They are more interested in yes. that because as per my subjects which I teach, we have music and also dance. So having a technology a support, it, it makes my class more attractive because we can even project the, the song, the lyrics for them to start uh, learning it together with me. So it makes it really interesting. So when you've been using the um, technology in your classroom, have you seen other skills that students have developed during the, when they were learning the technology? Yes, because we have some shy pupils who were not participating yeah. and now you see that they can sing very well and maybe they cannot write but they can sing along, they, they are learning words and gradually they, they upgrade themselves. When the child, uh, when the children are using the technological equipment, however we are providing them, the, I think their attention stays more focused mm -hmm. than with an ordinary textbook or computer. Yeah. So what I can uh, gather from what you're saying is that their communication skills are actually developed, developed and enhanced yeah. to, yeah. to the teaching. Okay. Can you please explain to me, the challenges that you may encounter when you teach with technology. What challenges? I think one of your friends has already mentioned about one major challenge that he's actually encountering to teach with technology. Any other challenge that you think you may encounter when you teach with technology in schools? One of it, if I can take that, to answer, the first thing I would make an appeal to the ministry to please um, to have us have a Wi-Fi connection yeah. to help us all, at least for the teachers, that we can have uh, various apps, we can use YouTube to have access, to make them review some videos, educational one of course, mm -hmm. but that would be really uh, helpful to us. Okay. And That's the person. And also what I what I would like to add is that to be able to uh, to be able to, as we say, manier le vraiment, 
So we have to get for good uh, training mm -hmm. so that we are able to understand the technology first because we are going to teach others. So if we don't understand how it works or what are the things that you can do to improve, to be more creative, innovative. So this is, I think, something that it is a must and it has to be ongoing because it continues to develop, as you can see, technology, new mobile phone, new tablets. It continues to evolve. So my appeal also would be like, we have to get continuous training, especially on uh, ICT-based learning. Capacity building yeah. in terms of using yes. the yes. Any other challenge that you think you may encounter, if you have not yet encountered? I think the main challenge is that uh, the, uh, access to internet is very, very important. Because uh, as we all know that you may have a tablet or a mobile phone and if it's not connected to the internet, then what's really the use of it? But if we are going to use it properly, the access to the internet, I mean, even for the children and for the educators, it will be highly efficient and uh, meaningful and fun also. And uh, in this way, learning will take it, will take place more efficiently. Uh, what are the measures that you will take to address the possible challenges stated before? For example, if you have one challenge that moving and so on, how do you really cope with this situation? Well, to be honest, I don't use it at all. Though I have my laptop and everything ready, I have so many videos for my kids, interactive, I simply can't use it. But still, I try to. At times, when I was at Phoenix, I was provided, and even at Jean Lebrun, I was provided with a projector. At that time, then I can, but where I am right now, at many of you don't have this, this facility, so it's really impossible for me to, to make use of that. In terms of the internet connection, if you don't have the internet connection, you find it a challenge. How, what do you do to actually um, cater for your students I, using technology. I personally have, uh, I use an unlimited mobile ba data package, which is, uh, I'm always, uh, I'm always connected to. So I try to save my work on a pen drive and transfer it. You know, you have to transfer it to the laptop, then, uh, then do, or you can send my mail. Things but like but that. this is at your own cost. Yes. yes. Is there yes. another thing with the device that you can use? No. 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 Okay. Uh, according to you, what is the future of education in the world? It would be technological based. Why do you think? Because children now they are, they are not interested by the talk and talk methods and the traditional methods. They want technology. Okay. Yeah. So, you are saying that they learn better through technology? Yes, it enhances the learning. They, they still need us, but the technology is a great support to get their attention, to enhance the learning, the teaching. Any Mauritius? What is the future of education in Mauritius? A lot of development needed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe We've started. We've started. Yeah. yeah. Just Maybe you can talk a bit about what you've started? About Things that you you start. Maybe concerning for the world part, I would say that in education now it is, it is becoming more independent. So the students are more expected to stand on his, on his own, and to do that, I would I would uh, join my friend to say that yes, technology is one of the best tool to be able to become more independent. And for Mauritius, as you have said, as you you know, for the COVID nineteen, we had problems of confinement. So we were called, educators we were called, to, to come and try to contribute through online lessons, radio lessons, TV lessons, mm -hmm. which we are doing and we are still doing it, which is very interesting because we are like in a, let's say like a virtual class whereby we don't have students but we can reach students by staying in, 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 in a place here, like a recording room. So this was different earlier, there wasn't this type of education. So that for me is a very big step in technology for Mauritius because c'est une première en passant. Donc, euh, donc yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to add on to my friend Amrita. We are definitely in Mauritius. We are gradually um, improving technologically for our education system. It's uh, 
what I'm actually just saying is just so true because we have seen during confinement how technology can help us read children and uh, I think that uh, this was uh, actually to a large extent beneficial to parents also and uh, to us also to attain our objectives and also to most importantly to our kids. And technology has keep us connected during mm -hmm. the confinement period so we cannot we cannot say that technology is not important. Without technology, there would have been any connection with our children. Yeah. Do you think using technology will help to shape the learners of tomorrow? Absolutely. Yes. yes. We are in the digital, sorry, digital, digital world. Yeah. And we are moving to digital learning and teaching. Yeah. So I think in Mauritius, I will just take back what we were saying. Uh, in Mauritius, we have moved from uh, the chalk. To, um, traditional. To traditional way, I mean, from the traditional teaching method to the digital one. First of all, we started with the PowerPoint making lesson, and then we moved to this one, um, the new one using the interactive whiteboard here at MIU, which I found really more engaging to find the kids to engage in them throughout the lesson, which we couldn't throughout the PowerPoint. It was only um, auditory. Not that engaging. But this with this one, I found it really nice to keep the, the pupils engaged and everything. Even the, the parents can accompany yes. their children with that. And lessons can be pre-planned also. We can use the lesson at a different paces at different subject areas. Yeah, very nice. But I think something which we have to take into consideration is that when we're talking about technology <coughs> and education. We must not forget that we do come from the traditional format of our education with the input of technology nowadays. But what we have to do is we have to also educate the, our children that how to use this technology because misuse of technology, we all know about it, internet and all the misuse. But to be able to make technology really efficient in education, we have to first of all educate our children to use it properly. This is one thing. And also, as I told you, that educators must be formed for that. Yes. And also, we have to change, because if you will observe it well, we are changing the culture of education itself. It is changing, the mindset is changing. So it is possible that a part of the children population, the student population, they are able to cope with technology, whereby another part is left out. Because as you can see, social background, all this, the background, the income, all this have uh, an impact on the child's education, normally the traditional one. Mm. But definitely concerning the technology, it will have also the same, another impact like that. So what we have to do in order to make it successful, really to make the technology integrate in our education, we have to make sure that we educate the children in such a way to change the mentality, the culture of learning. And for that, while we are teaching the, the children, we have to make sure we are gradually. It shouldn't be like abrupt. It should be integrated smoothly, gradually, into the curriculum, into the syllabus. So then it will be successful. I think this is where we have uh, we have to take uh, to take it in our hands, because uh, uh, if we take into consideration the social background of certain students, definitely that we all know that. Everyone is done the same, but I think if we as, educa as educators and the education system itself, we have we ponder over it, we we make it a way that the technological uh, side of education is accessed, is given proper, pro properly access to every learner, to every learner, then it will surely uh, help a lot. Thank you very much. We have come to the end of the interview. Maybe you can you can say a closing something to do. Well, as a closing uh, speech, which I would like to say is that we are all aware that it is impossible that we we can make advances in education without technology. So therefore, uh, we are. I think we are in a very positive uh, pathway because ministry also is giving full support, as I can see. And that's very, uh, that's very good and positive because we can see that our children can have a very bright future 
using technology. And as I have said also, we need guidance, we need support, which, which is something we can't do alone. And we are ever ready as educators and motivated to help in that. And I think educators can help in the safe practice of technology. And uh, please, my friends have already answered this part, but I'd like to thank the Ministry, the MIE, and everyone concerned in the education sector for the job that we are all doing. Uh, really, it's a, it's a marvelous job, but being updated with uh, technological equipment and uh, the, with the uh, informal side of it will, will help a lot. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your contribution.